Directorable Podcast, the go-to source for hiring and leadership made simple, doable, and fun for visionary female business owners. I'm your host, Ashley Cox, author, certified HR expert, and founder of Sprout HR. And I believe that you don't have to change who you are to be a great leader because you already are one. Join me as we kiss uncertainty and overwhelm goodbye and say hello to the tools and support you need to grow a profitable, sustainable, impactful team with more confidence and ease. On today's episode, Abby Herman joins me for a fun and educational conversation on using artificial intelligence in your small business to kick off our brand new AI series. Abby Herman is a fractional marketing director, content strategist, and podcast manager for business owners who want to gain visibility for their businesses with personalized content strategies and implementation. She also sells marketing tools and resources in her shop, The Content Experiment Lab, and she's host of the fabulous podcast, The Content Experiment. In this episode, Abby shares about what artificial intelligence actually is and all of the areas that it shows up in our lives, the lowest barrier to entry for using AI in your business to serve your customers better, the difference between creative content and constructed content when using AI, ethical considerations we all need to be aware of, and dead giveaways that your content was generated using AI, including some common words and phrases to avoid. We also talk about how to maintain your own brand voice and keep the humanity in your content when using AI tools. But I have to tell you, my favorite part of the conversation is when we talked about how to use AI to leverage the brilliance and creativity of you and your team. So you are not going to want to miss that part of today's episode. Now, here's my conversation with Abby Herman. Hey there, Abby. Welcome to the Impact Ripple Podcast. I am so excited to have you on today, my friend. Me too. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're so welcome. So for our listeners, you and I met like seven or eight years ago in a Facebook group, and we have just really been fast friends and and longtime friends since then, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. But we've only met in real life, I think, one time. Yes, San Diego, 2019. (laughs) And you were surprised at how short I was, and I was surprised at how tall you were. (laughs) Oh, that's hilarious. Yes, I remember that. Like, you're so much shorter than I thought you would be. (laughs) Is that rude to say? Was that rude of me? (laughs) No, no. it's, It's a common thing. And I also think, like, we all look about the same height when you're on Zoom, right? For sure. I'm 5'2", for those who've not met me in person, which is really quite short. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Abby, how tall are you? I'm 5'8". 5'8". Okay, so that's a six-inch difference. You know, my husband's Mm -hmm. 5'8", and so I always tell him, he's always like, oh, I wish I was taller. And I'm like, well, you're tall to me when when it's a whole extra six inches. Um, But (laughs) it's so funny just to meet your, your online friends and, uh, you know, acquaintances and, and business coworkers and stuff in person. And so um, what, a, what a gift it was to be able to meet you in person and to hug you. And I know you're not a hugger. Um, so for anyone who ever meets me in person, I'm a hugger. I do ask for <laughs> consent, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I usually will hug back just because it's nice to see people in real life who you mostly know through the internet. So yeah, right, right. And we yeah. spent a lot of time together over the years. I mean, I've purchased your resources and been part of your programs. And um, fun fact for all of our listeners, Abby's actually the one who helped us get this podcast started, which was such, oh my gosh, that was such an incredible experience because we were just like deer in the headlights over here. What in the world are we doing? How do we do this? How do we not mess this up royally? What do we Mm -hmm. not know that we need to know? And Abby was such an incredible resource for us and just gave us a lot of you know, calm and confidence along that journey and just really step-by-step walked us through. And I I couldn't have asked for a better podcast, you know, support system and and launch. And, you know, we're, we're in season three now, which just feels so incredible to talk about. So thank you, Abby, for for that level of support. Well, I could only do it because I had support in my business who you helped me with. (laughs) 
Did you like that segue? I mean, I mean that like was really perfect. We did not plan that. No, we did not. But yes, yeah, like yeah, Ashley has helped me with um, hiring and creating job descriptions and things like that, and um, ended up with an amazing assistant who has been with me over three years now. Yes, yes. Shout out As, to Maddie, yeah. who's amazing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But just to let you know that, you know, Abby and I have really worked together hand in hand for many years now, and I mm -hmm. trust her implicitly. I'm excited to have you on our show today. We actually co work with another one of our podcast guests, Lindsay Recknell. So go back and listen to episode 15, Increasing Hope and Mental Wellness on Your Team. And that's where Lindsay and I come together. But Lindsay and Abby and I co work virtually like a couple of times a month. And that just really helps us to get work done. So we know each other really well. And I'm excited because I think that lends a lot to conversations, especially around topics like what we're going to dive into today, which is all about artificial intelligence. And I'm excited mm -hmm. to get your take on this. This is the first um, podcast episode in our artificial intelligence series. We've got some amazing episodes coming for you um, that I'm super, super excited to share. Um, so to kick us off, Abby, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came to be doing the work that you're doing today before we dive into artificial intelligence. Yeah, um, I will tell the shortened version of the story, which is basically, I, I mean, I started my business in 2007. I was a single mom and a t uh, elementary school teacher in Arizona, and um, I couldn't afford to pay my bills. <laughs> And so I, uh, which I don't think is unusual, but I was the only income in my household and I had this little five-year-old, yeah, she was five at the time, um, and I needed something. I needed to do something extra. And so I did some poking around and I found the company who developed the website um, that my school and school district uses, the company that they used. And so... I, you know, went to work for them. There's a whole story behind that that I won't get into, but I, it took a little while, but I finally convinced them that they needed to hire me. Um, so I did some um, very low paid <laughs> freelance work, uh, $9 an hour, by the way, um, which was below, I mean, it was ridiculous, but I was excited for the work and I learned um, a lot about the online space and the online world. Um, teaching was actually my second career. My first career was uh, public relations. And so I was able to put some of what I knew from my actual, my degree in public relations into play there. And I volunteered for everything. I learned everything I possibly could. And then in 2013, um, I decided I had had enough of working every single weekend, every single night, every single school holiday. Um, and I left teaching. Um, I was very in debt. I did not have enough clients to um, support me financially. I was still the only income in my household 10 years later, 11 years later, I still am today. Um, the only income in my house, but I was like, you know what, I had I was almost 40. And I knew that I needed to make a change in my life. Um, and I was tired of being miserable. So I left teaching and started doing this full time. And it's kind of morphed from um, being a copywriter and just straight out content creation to now doing podcast management, content strategy and development. Um, and implementation for clients. So, and, and I recently opened up a digital shop because one of the things that I was really um, frustrated with when I first left teaching was I was a broke single mom trying to grow a business <laughs> and mm -hmm. I could not find resources and tools out there to help me uh, grow, to help me figure out what in the world I was doing because I had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> how to grow a business. Like most of us didn't go to business school. And so I was, um, so I knew like one day I need to do something to help support people who were in that, who are in that same situation that I was in. So I opened up a, a, a digital shop. It only has a couple products right now, but I'm planning to grow it with just the resources and tools that I think will help with marketing and online business and creating content and being a podcast host and all of those things. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's my story. Ah, I love <laughs> it. I love it. I've heard this story a few times now and I just, I just admire that journey so much because it takes a lot of 
courage and self-belief and um, tenacity to stick with that. And it can be so terrifying to start a business just as an individual, but to be a single parent and to start a business and to know, you know, when you, when you went full time in that business, that you were the sole income provider. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I just, that's just so brave. And I just, Thanks. I love that part of your story. So, um, well, not without tears. Cause you know, that there have been some tears <laughs> along the way every that's couple of months or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, it's, you know, I mean, I wouldn't go back and change it. And I, I couldn't imagine doing anything different yeah. than I'm doing right now. So I, I always yeah. say that being a business owner is the greatest personal development experience that I've oh. ever had. Um, yes. There's no book, there's no video, there's no conference, there's no workshop, there's no PDF or checklist or download that can give you this level of personal growth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so we know that as part of that business journey, there's a lot of figuring out new things. And mm -hmm. watch this segue, folks. Artificial intelligence is a new thing in our business that we're figuring out. <laughs> that was yes, it soon, is. Right? Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so I want to kind of start off, especially since this is our first episode in our artificial intelligence series, just with a very basic question. What, it, what exactly mm -hmm. is artificial intelligence and, and what are the basic things that we need to know about it for our business? So I'll give you the very non-technical answer to it. Perfect. It's basically artificial intelligence is software that tries to, tries to, <laughs> tries to um, simulate human intelligence and human processes. And it's funny because, so I deal mostly with art, artificial intelligence in terms of content creation uh, for business marketing, uh, for business content creation can also be tons of other things inside of a business too. But there are so many pieces of artificial intelligence that um, I think we don't realize are artificial intelligence. So if you just Google, like, what is artificial intelligence or ask or Google examples of it, uh, the actual search results you get, that's artificial intelligence, by the way. But like things like spam filters in your email, the algorithms on social media, um, new in uh, Google Mail, there's like a quick reply. So based on um, specific words that are used in like the sender's email, it will, when you hit reply, it will pop up like these predicted um, responses, like thanks or no, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but like Sounds or a good great. one. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, project management tools are artificial intelligence. Um, I use something that I use for my own podcast is otter.ai, which you load the audio and it transcribes. So any kind of transcription, um, Zoom has a new one that I can't think of uh, what it's called right now off the top of my head. But those are any kind of transcription uh, tool or software is artificial intelligence. So it's yeah. just it, navigation on your car. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's artificial intelligence. So there's tons of different um, types out there. Um, so yeah, I think the one that's talked about the most, and the one that I actually use the most is Chat GPT um, for you know content creation and and things like that. Yeah. So this is really important because I think that everybody, if not every single person, but a lot of people have been really um, hesitant to use AI because, mm -hmm. and we're going to say AI for artificial intelligence, because that's a whole mouth, mouth load. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, everybody's been really hesitant around using AI when in fact, AI is not new. It's been around for a long, long time, like decades now at this point. Mm -hmm. And we use it in almost everyday situations. Like yes. you said, from navigating with GPS in your car to doing a Google search or, uh, you know, 
the reply messages inside of Gmail where it says, Hey, sounds great. Thanks so much. And you know, yes. you don't even have to write anything. So sitting in front of your TV, watching TV. So Netflix dreaming. and Hulu, they mm -hmm. all use artificial intelligence to predict or to recommend yes. um, additional shows for you to watch. Like and that's because why you watch this, you would like this. Right. And that's why like when I'm here at my house, my recommended shows look very different than when I go to my mom's house. And she always mm -hmm. says, but why are your shows so much different? And I said, because we watch different things. We have different, you know, taste in, in movies and TV shows, and it's going to show you more of what you like. And she goes, well, how do yeah. I find what, what you have? And I said, I can send you some recommendations and then you can kind of upload them to your Netflix and it can start giving you different recommendations. So it, it's that learning technology too, right? It's learning yes. about you and your likes and your dislikes and those preferences. Um, and so there's, there's so much that really has gone into AI and love it or hate it. I think it's one of those relationships. It's, it's <laughs> always going to be a both and. <laughs> Um, it will always be around from now right? until forever. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. Like we're not getting away from this new wave of, of AI in the form of things like chat GPT. Um, so let's talk about, you know, that part of, of AI. Let's talk specifically about the way that business owners specifically are using and can use AI in their business. So give us kind of that, that entryway to using AI in your small business. So if you have a small team um, that is not working around the clock, but yet you have products and services that you are able to, that your customers are able to access around the clock, you want to be able to support them if they're across the world or if they just, you know, are working with your products and services on off hours. So something like chatbots is... I think a really um, low barrier to entry way to get into using AI in your business. You basically front load the uh, tool with responses to specific questions and kind of like a frequently asked questions page, but it relies on specific words that the customer is using in their inputs when they're typing into the chat. I think in 2024, I think, <laughs> <laughs> Most people know that when they are interacting with a chat bot, that it is actually a bot, that they're not actually communicating with a human being. I know that some of those uh, chat features are um, run by human beings or during certain hours they're run by human beings. But I think we all know that like when we're, you know, typing things into the computer and it's giving us article suggestions or help um, information that we're talking to a bot. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. So that's just that's just one use. Um, the other another use would be uh, and something that that I've used is helping with marketing, helping with content creation and um, getting my message out. You can also use, and this is through, I use ChatGPT for this. You can also use it to create case studies for your business. You can use it to help um, outline a, an HR manual. You can use it to create templated emails for um, your employees or for your audience members, for your customers. There are so many different ways that you can use it. Um, that and actually one way that's really fun i think is one day i was trying to put together we've been doing sops we've been creating lots of sops for myself and for clients around marketing tasks and i was trying to remember all of the steps that i took to do a specific task for a client and i was getting really frustrated because it was taking forever and i was typing it all out and i was like this is this is dumb so <laughs> instead I decided to record myself in a Loom video, um, actually doing the task. And as I was doing the task, I was talking it out loud. I was saying out loud exactly what I was doing. I took the audio from that Loom video, um, loaded it into otter.ai to create a transcript, and then took the transcript and literally copied and pasted the whole thing. It was pretty long copied and pasted the whole thing into chat GPT and asked it to create an SOP standard operating operating procedure for me and to like organize it in a specific way. And the 
information that came out was unreal. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I just saved myself so much time. All we have to do is walk through, which we're doing it anyway, walk through the tasks of a, of a system that we use in our business, talk it out, and then let ChatGPT do the rest. It was amazing. <laughs> Love it. That is so genius. That is so genius. And and I'm I'm very similar in my use of of chat GBT. I love to give it big chunks of content and information and mm -hmm. say distill this for me because I just cannot. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it takes yes. a lot, you know, initially to create whether it's walking through verbally, you know, an SOP or in in my in one of my cases, you know, our podcast I create all of this content for the podcast. And then you have to go back and create all of this content to be able to share it with the world. And what used to take us hours, literally hours and hours of time in season one, when we weren't using AI, it now takes 45 minutes, maybe under an hour for sure, to be able to create so much valuable content to share this message. And it's not you know, asking chat GPT to come up with a podcast episode and give me all the talking points. Like that's all my thought leadership. That's our conversations. That's our brilliance. And then we're just asking chat GPT, Hey, write me a summary for this. Write me some, you know, bullet points. What are people going to learn from this conversation? Um, pull quotes out. That's one of my favorite ways to use it. Give me five direct quotes from Abby Herman in this conversation that we can use to share with our audience. Like what? That's brilliant. Yes. So many fun, exciting ways to use it that reduces the time that we're having to have that hands-on content creation from something we've already created, you know, right? Yes. This is the repurposing, I guess I should say. We've done the content creation and ChatGPT is assisting us in the repurposing of that content. So I recently was listening to a podcast, the Social Media Examiner podcast, and I heard uh, Robert Rose, who is a content marketer. Um, he has a content marketing agency. He's written some books on content marketing. He was talking about uh, two different types of content. And this totally brings in the, the thought leadership piece that you were talking about. There is cr constructed content and created content. Created content is your thought leadership. That is the information that comes from your brain that, you know, you, your life experiences, um, your, the experiences you've had with clients, um, all of that is comes and your knowledge, your own personal knowledge that you've gained and opinions that you have, that all is created content, your thought leadership. The constructed content is the content that when you ask ChatGPT to write an article or to develop an outline or whatever it is, it's pulling information from all sorts of different um resources that are found on the internet that are found online. And so that is constructed. Another, some of the examples too, that he gives of constructed content are a dictionary. It's information. It's, it's something that's created to communicate something, a dictionary, how to manuals, SOPs, things like that contract could all be considered uh, constructed content. So I think it's really important to note that. And when you're creating content for your business and content does not have to just be marketing, it could be the things that you're doing in HR, the things you're doing in your leadership development. Um, when you are creating things for your teams, for your audience, for your clients, um, you know, for your stakeholders, they're human beings. <laughs> Even if you are working with larger businesses, the human beings are actually the ones c consuming the content. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to remember that and to be uh, respectful of the fact that you're creating stuff for human beings. And if you want them to... Um, you know, consume the information that you're putting out there. If you want them to respect you and to trust you, then having created content and making that part of your AI journey is so incredibly important. Yeah. Off, off my soapbox. <laughs> I love your soapbox because I think this is some of the, the challenge that people are are experiencing or some of that that push and pull effect. Like, oh, I want to mm -hmm. use AI because 
it feels like it could be such a great way to get support without hiring a bunch of team. It could be a way to not spend my time on tedious, boring, monotonous tasks and actually spend more of that time serving my clients and supporting my team. You know, it, it's, it really is such a great stopgap in our businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ethical considerations there as well. Yes. And absolutely. I know that you've got some feelings about those. So maybe this is another soapbox <laughs> moment, but I'm all, I'm all here for, especially as an HR professional, right? Like yeah. I talk a lot about ethical business practices and, and the things that we're doing to support our team and to, and to take care of our businesses and our clients. And I think that it's important for us to have conversations around the ethical considerations of chat GPT because they are very real. They're very prevalent and there are also ethical, responsible ways to use this great technology so that it can support us in our businesses. So tell us yeah. what are some of those ethical considerations that you've seen and, and experienced in using this type of software? Well, I think the biggest one is is what I just talked about, just like recognizing that you're creating content for human beings and and it's so important to respect their time and their intelligence <laughs> around, you know, around uh, it, the information that you're, you're feeding them, that you're giving them. I think that mm -hmm. that's really important. Um, I know that a lot of people are really concerned about plagiarism and mm -hmm. I talked about constructed content. So plagiarism is a, is a, something that people are worried about. Mm -hmm. However, when you are creating uh, content from chat GPT, when you're giving it a prompt and you're asking it to um, construct something for you, it's really not plagiarizing. It's, it's not um, because it's pulling from so many different places and it's actually creating something original. So you're not plagiarizing. You're not copying and pasting from anywhere. Now, if you're using somebody else's content, if you're using somebody else's information, copying and pasting that into chat GPT as a prompt. Yeah. I think that there's some definite ethical, uh, um, considerations around that, but yeah. actually asking it to create something, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's not, uh, mm -hmm. and I, and I think it's fine to do that, but then that goes back to let's respect the people who are, you know, if, if you're passing off your, um, if you're passing off something that chat GPT created as your own, mm -hmm. um, asking it to create a story, an article, a, a whatever from scratch without your thought leadership mm -hmm. inputted into it, then I don't think that that is very ethical to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to co-sign that. That's a, to me, that feels not even like a, a blurry line. That's a hard line. Mm -hmm. If you're taking yeah. and just leveraging that chat GPT can literally create anything mm -hmm. and you're just slapping it on your website or your social content or in your newsletter as your own original thoughts, that's not okay. Yes. But, yes. but the way to really effectively use it are the ways that we've been talking about feeding it our thought leadership and letting mm -hmm. it help us streamline it turn it into an outline, summarize it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's also yeah. like this, um, you know, like I've, I'm getting ready to do a training next month. So we're recording this in January, 2024. So in February, I'll be giving a training, um, all about giving and receiving feedback, um, in a, in a compassionate and empathetic and effective way. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did was I input all of my notes for that training. And I said, okay, give me a summary, give me, you know, five things people are going to walk away from this workshop learning. Um, give me, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, take what I've created and, and give me some summarized version of that. Yes. Um, so then you yeah. can write, you know, you can use that to write your own social media captions, your own newsletters, your own promo content, um, but mm -hmm. it's still your content. It's still your yes. creative energy and expertise and brilliance. And we don't want to lose that. And I right. think that's too something that we're really concerned about with AI is that we're taking the humanness out of the creation. But uh -huh. that's where the beauty and the brilliance lies. Yes, because a, a machine, a, a computer program, it, it, it doesn't have empathy. It mm -hmm. doesn't have lived experiences. It doesn't have emotion. Like that just, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I will tell you though, so I want to um, share an example of how you can use AI 
to create something for from scratch in a way that I believe is very ethical and appropriate Let's to do save it. like ton, tons and tons of time. Yeah. So, um, and I actually walk this through, I have a podcast episode coming up in a couple of weeks that um, actually walks through exactly step-by-step -step how I do this. But let's say, for example, you want to create something that you know is important to your team, your customers, your audience, whoever, and you're like <laughs> stuck. You don't even know where to start. <laughs> so this is actually something I, I, I literally did this just um, recently. Ask ChatGPT or whatever. I, and I keep saying ChatGPT because that's what I use, but there's lots of other options out there. Mm -hmm. But ask your AI to create or to, to give you a list of topics. So you could use this, use this mm -hmm. for blog articles, maybe it's trainings that you want to offer to uh, team members, you know, marketing, whatever it is. Ask it to create an outline, what, or I'm sorry, a list of topics that you should that you should cover and let it come up with a list of topics. You, with your own uh, experience, knowledge, expertise, can look at that list and say, yes, 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 nope, nope, <laughs> yes, yes. And you can eliminate some things. Mm -hmm. Then you can take that list and you can turn around and ask ChatGPT or AI to create an outline of what a training might look like for that topic. Let it do the outline with your experience and your knowledge your expertise, go in and you can edit that and, you know, make it yours. So you can use it to start from scratch, but then you are going in and you're making changes. I generally will take whatever output that the tool gives me and I'll copy and paste it into a Google Doc and I'll do my work there and then I'll copy and paste it back when I'm ready for like the next step. But you can do that in a way that like... I have, um, I've done that for my own podcast episodes where it will come up with things that I wouldn't have thought to put in the episode otherwise, or in the email or in the social post or whatever, it will come up with, with things that I wouldn't have thought about, but that are valuable. And I will always put my own spin on it and use my own expertise and my own attitude I guess. <laughs> um, and you can do the same too like you only you know your team better than anybody else mm -hmm. certainly better than a robot and so you can um tweak and refine any outline or anything you know before you actually take action on it so so it is sort of constructed content, but it is still created with your expertise and your knowledge base and your experiences and so on. This is such a perfect differentiation, right? Because <laughs> I think in my mind, this is more the research that comes in the developmental phase of content creation right? Yes. Like it's, it's our responsibility as business owners and content creators and thought leaders to research our ideal clients, their pain points, their needs, their frustrations, what they're struggling with to better understand how to share the brilliance that we have and the expertise and the knowledge and the experiences and all those things that you mentioned. And sometimes, you know, you sit down at that blank Google Doc and you're like, I have to write a podcast, you know, script today, or I have to write a newsletter. What do I talk about? You know, like, uh -huh. kind of like you know, what do I do with my hands sort of situation. And, and I think that it's so, so helpful as a tool to help you research what, what are some of those hot topics? Because it's pulling from the, the conglomeration of people talking about those topics. And so I think that that makes so much sense the way that you put it. And yeah. I think that, you know, if you go down that slippery slope of to say, okay, now write me a blog post for this topic, that's where mm -hmm. we start getting into, okay, well, are you really doing the work now? <laughs> yes, exactly. But exactly. I think, I think there's kind of a, there's a feeling that you get when you read certain posts or newsletters or captions that you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure that AI <laughs> wrote this. <laughs> There are some dead giveaways. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have a list. 
I knew you would. I was like, I have a list. Put this out there because I bet you've got some thoughts around this. Oh my gosh. Yes. So you can totally tell when someone takes something from AI and copies and pastes it into an email or a LinkedIn newsletter or um, social media posts. Like, yes, you can tell. Would you like me? I won't, I won't go through the whole list, but would you like maybe, me to share maybe, some of the things? Maybe, maybe give us like the top three to five and also okay. I'm taking notes. <laughs> okay. So number one is, um, oh gosh, I don't even know where to start. So obviously I think, I think that the, the obvious one is a lack of personal stories, a lack of empathy. Mm -hmm. All of that is, I mean, I think that that's pretty, pretty obvious. Um, if the grammar is perfect, probably mm. written by a robot, because mm -hmm. we as human beings, that's, that's not how we write. Mm -hmm. That's not how we communicate. We're not all English teachers and grammar nerds and all of that. Um, yeah, so if it's got perfect grammar, probably written by a robot. Um, in a blog post or an article, there's generally like a formal introduction and a formal conclusion and closing that is like called out. In conclusion, <laughs> specifically the, the conclusion part, mm -hmm. it's, um, that makes it really obvious. When on social media posts, when there's lots of emojis, mm -hmm. usually like they, it, there's like a, a quote unquote headline and there's an emoji on either end of it, mm -hmm. that's probably copied and pasted from mm -hmm. a um, from a bot from chat GPT. Yeah. I feel like um, there's a really typical or standard way that, that chat GPT specifically, cause I know that's the one that you yes. and I use. Like when I see that formatting in a caption, I'm like, mm, that yes. came straight out of chat GPT. Like you gotta zhuzh it up a little folks. You gotta yes. change things up and make it fit your brand voice and your style. And, and we mm -hmm. like a lot of emojis over here at Sprout HR, but not everybody <laughs> does. And ours also aren't formatted in that same sort of typical output way. So we have to change yeah. things up when we get those captions and, and make it sound human. Yes. All right. What else? Yeah. Anything else you want to share? So there are some specific words that um, ChatGPT uses. <laughs> I think the number one is delve. This week we're delving into or diving yeah. into, and oh my goodness, I hate the word delve now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. It is way overused. I'm like, give me 10 synonyms for the word delve. Uh huh. <laughs> I actually those. have, I've started putting into my prompts, do not use the word delve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I naturally use dive into because I think that's mm -hmm. probably a throwback from my corporate days. And I try to get rid of as much corporate lingo and, and, you know, jibber jabber as I can, but th yes. that one kind of sticks with me. But one of the words I see come up in my content all the time is transformational. Everything's uh -huh. transformative and transformational and we're transforming everything. And I get yeah. it. Like I literally wrote a book called transform your stories. So I get that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't even use that word every single day in my content, but boy, chat GPT, it just wants me to use it. <laughs> yes. Other ones are like, uh, yeah, well, I, I actually have that one written down on my list. <laughs> Join me on a transformative journey yes. or let's embark on a journey of, um, mm -hmm tangled in the web of, you know, like whatever two things you're comparing with each other, mm -hmm. unleash the power of, you know, I mean, it's just wordplay. It, it tries to be clever. Mm -hmm. um, so it's so important that if you are taking a transcript from something and asking ChatGPT to uh, create social media posts around it, that's totally fine. Like do it. I do it. It's, it's fine. But review what you're writing so that you have some empathy, you have some personalization in there so that you like use words that you actually use in real life. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'll get really frustrated and I'll type into the prompt when I'm asking it to rewrite something, uh, write like a human. <laughs> I'll say right like a human. Humans don't work to use delve. <laughs> I'll literally type that in there because mm -hmm. it is okay to like, you know, um, ask it to rewrite. I have done that. Rewrite with more empathy. You know, sometimes I will ask it to include a personal story and it will come up with a personal story. Um, I, I use the paid version of chat GPT. And so sometimes, uh, so there's, you can create, um, 
um, I think they're called GPTs. I think you can create, so for different uh, purposes or different clients or different audiences, you can create a separate like prompt mm -hmm. that's supposed to be remembered. Like you're supposed to be able to train it. You really can't, but sometimes you can, uh, it will remember like previous posts or mm -hmm. previous information that you put in there. And so sometimes it will come up with a personal story and sometimes they're pretty interesting. They're, they're kind of funny to, to, read and to listen to and you know and then i can make it my own like it can, it can give me a place to start and oh i and i will come up with my own personal mm -hmm. story delete what it wrote and type in my own oh, so i love that yeah i've definitely asked chat gpt to um write in a m more fun and personable way uh -huh. uh, i've told it to not be so cheesy because i was like where did this even come from <laughs> yes yeah so yes. you or, or write like you're thing. right like you're talking to a friend but not that mm -hmm. good of a friend you know like mm -hmm. right like you're talking to you know your mom uh mm -hmm. because you want it to be friendly but not you know, when you say sometimes when you tell it to be friendly it takes that in a whole new direction and it's way overly friendly or was or um really casual, much more casual than what you would want to yeah. include. So or it right, uses like, a bunch a of slang. Yeah. It uses yeah. a bunch of slang that I'm like, I would never say that <laughs> or right. in that yes. way. Right. It does. Right. It, it definitely takes some zhuzhing. It takes mm -hmm. finessing. You have to read the output that GPT is giving you or any AI technology and make it your own. You yes. cannot just let it come out of the box. And I think that's important to know too, when you're working with a team, you know, I think that that's where a lot of that, you know, that content strategy comes into play, the brand voice, the way that we sound as a company, the way that we show up online so that everybody on your team, whether there's you and a VA or you and 20 team members can mm -hmm. be able to look at that guide and say, here's how we use this AI software and how we still sound like us. Do you have yes. any tips or guidance for folks on, on using this with their team and, and really making sure that that customer experience is cohesive and, and well-branded? Yeah. Well, I think it's always important to have prompts, like consistent prompts that you are feeding into chat GPT based on who you are, your brand voice, your customers, um, the type of content that you're creating, know what that uh, language looks like so that when you're asking uh, any kind of AI tool to perform a task for you, you have that language mapped out. And so it's literally a matter of copying and pasting it into whatever tool and then adding like the additional information, like what you want it to create for you. So being really consistent in that way, um, I think is important. So that means your team has to know, like you just said, your brand voice and, you know, personality and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So important. Yes. So we are coming to the end of our conversation, Abby, and it's been an incredible conversation. I think it's so much value and so much, you know, just actionable, common sense ways that we can implement AI into our businesses in a really, really effective way and still sound human because that is like so important. And, and if you've been listening to the podcast for any length of time, or you've heard me on other podcasts, I'm always talking about bringing the humanity back to business, bringing the humanity back to team, to customers, to the way that we interact in the world. And I think that this is so in alignment with that. Um, and I just appreciate you being here so much today, Abby. So it's yeah. time for our final segment. Imagine yes. the impact everyone's favorite. I don't know. I keep saying that and I, I've had people tell me, but it really is my favorite because this is where we get to have, uh, you know, you help us paint the vision for the kind of impact that our listeners could create in the world through a key thought or a takeaway or an action item from today's conversation, whether it's something you've already shared or something new that you haven't had a chance to share yet. Yeah. Um, so I think that using AI is here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away. It's already completely infiltrated every part of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's important to embrace it and use it in a way that works for you and that feels good to you. Um, not necessarily, you know, using it in every part of your business or every piece of content that you're creating, but I think it's important to to learn and to try it out. 
I when I first heard about ChatGPT and just these writing tools in general, I was like, oh my god, my business is gonna like fall apart. I'm gonna, I just, I'm gonna have to go back to teaching. I'm gonna have to do what you know. Mm. I was in panic mode, and then I thought, no, I need to learn about this. I need to educate myself because a not everybody wants to learn it, or you know. And there will always be like the need for human impact. So I think that, you know, learning about it, finding a, a way that works for you and knowing that chat GPT AI is never going to replace humans. Yes, mm -hmm. it will replace some of the tasks that humans do, but think about the possibilities. If you're able to use technology to, you know, take over some of the like automated tasks that people in your business do and leverage like your employees or your um, contractors, your teammates, thought leadership to do other things, bigger and better things. Like think of the impact that you could make if you did that. Yes. Oh, I love this so much because it frees humans up to do what they were designed to do. And that is to be creative in yes. this world. And so yes. let's get rid of the tedious. Let's get rid of the boring. Let's get rid of the mundane and the humdrum and the have to do it tasks. Let's let mm -hmm. AI handle that. And yes. let's let people be the creative, brilliant, genius people that they are. Oh, yes. Imagine Absolutely. the impact that could have on your business. <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. it's profound. It really is. Yes. So Abby, tell us where I know people are going to want to connect with you because this was such an amazing conversation. And I know that you also have a resource for folks if they are interested in getting some more support with AI. Um, so tell us where we can connect with you at and learn more and grab that resource. Yes, thank you. I'm on Instagram at The Content Experiment. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. It's Abby M. Herman. Feel free to connect with me there. And then, yeah, I have a, a chat. Be I've been talking about prompts and inputs and things like that. So I have a guide to help you with uh, creating those chat GPT prompts for your business. And you can get that at thecontentexperiment.com slash impact. It is not free. <laughs> and the reason it's not free it, it is because I plan to spend a lot of time updating it. And because ChatGPT has changed so much over the years, over the years, over the year and a few months that it's been around um, as of this recording. So I plan to continue to update this guide and put out, you know, new versions um, and send that out to the people who purchase it. It is priced uh, to sell. It's priced to be accessible to those newer business owners that I talked about at the beginning of the episode, uh, because it's so important that um, to me that there's affordable resources out there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's under $20 uh, as of this recording. So January, 2024, but don't hold yes. us to that price point. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 2026. Yes. Yes. No, I love that though. I love that it's going to be a living, breathing, ever evolving you know, resource for folks because it is changing at the speed of light. And so yes. knowing that when you buy this, you're going to get all of those updates along the way is invaluable for sure. And I, I would encourage the, the folks that are listening who aren't quite ready yet to hire a team, or you're just starting to toe into the, the idea of getting some support in your business, help yourself with this AI guide, help yourself buy hours of your life back because that's literally what what AI and specifically chat GPT has done for me and my business. And I have team. And so I think that it can be for people who don't want to hire a team, who have contractors, who are just hiring their first employee or who have multiple employees. You know, it's, it could also be a resource for someone on your team. Maybe you don't have to be the chat GPT or AI expert, but somebody else might be really interested in learning and, and having a tool and a resource and someone like Abby to be able to go to could be incredibly valuable for that team member as well as for your business. So grab that. I'm gonna link it up in our show notes along with everything else that we talked about today. 
But I just want to thank you one more time, Abby, for joining us on The Impact Ripple. This has been such a fantastic conversation. Yes, thanks again for having me. Of course. And thank you, dear leaders, for tuning into our conversation today. I hope that you found it educational, um, inspiring, a little funny, because, you know, we try to just keep it real around here, <laughs> um, and that you've found a resource that can really support you in navigating what can sometimes be a little scary, a little confusing, and a little overwhelming um, in the artific artificial intelligence space. So as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with and for you on your leadership journey.